jumping around a little bit with um with Buck and the projects you guys do, obviously you guys have been around for a very long time. Obviously you can't say yes to every single project that comes in the door. Um, how do you typically choose what type of projects to get excited about and want to work on? Is it more the relationship? Is it more uh, the content type or, or what is it? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's shifted over the years probably um, and really even over from day to day, but you know, that is a big, we do turn down a ton of work. Um, and I would say that, you know, a lot of what I think has driven Buck's success is that we, we're a thoughtful and curious and bunch, right? So we will entertain lots of different things. And just because it might be something that doesn't speak to me creatively or financially or whatever, doesn't mean that it's not uh right for the team or for buck um and that's you know as we've grown that that kind of i would say mindset has grown exponentially um so there's lots of minds and lots of considerations that go into what we take and what we don't take i would say what's changed over the years is we've always been a good blend of business and creative and i think everyone at buck we've always been a very open environment we've always talked openly about our financials about budgets i really never liked the, the idea that agencies sort of separated those two because I feel like if, especially if you're curious and creative and a craftsperson, you're like, tell me what, you know, tell me what the, what the, where the walls and the sandbox are that I can play because there's lots that we can do with, uh, as long as that information is shared. So I think we've always had a healthy blend, even in our creative leadership of really thinking about, is this financially viable? Are we going to be able to make something great with this budget. Um, can we control that? Can we have a seat at the table with the client that's saying, you've asked for this, but given these parameters, timeline, budget, et cetera, what if we did this? I think, you know, that sort of um, way of working has always been valuable. And so I think what I, we've seen shift over time is that relationship is probably the thing that, you know, we used to think about is it is it a financial opportunity is it a, a creative opportunity more so you know can't it, what's the timeline those are probably like the three main considerations back in the day now it's it's shifted a bit more to um you know what's the what's the relationship and what's what's the ask and how is this um furthering our our creative relationships with our, with our we call them our partners you know rather than our clients because i think that's more and more the way that we work it's like they're really trusting us to come in and work closely with them to help figure out what the, they're, they're, we're, we're sort of the trusted experts in, in what we can and should deliver. And they're the trust, trusted experts in terms of their brand. And those are like the ideal relationships. And so that's often how we're thinking of it these days. I like that a lot. At a certain point, you know, you're gonna to get to a certain success threshold that you're, you're always have work coming in. So it's, it's not about, you know, chasing the opportunity. It's more about trying to, you know, weigh the pros and cons with anything. And at least for me, it's always relationship, like beyond anything else. I think that the money is always going to be there one way or another. It's more about who do I want to work with or what relationship do I want to nurture? And just, Hey, I love working with this person. We get each other. And that's like priceless. You can't, you know, build that otherwise. So it's more about finding those right partnerships. Yeah. And it's like that experience. And I think we found more and more that it's less about what we make, although that's of course hugely important to us, but it's about how we make it or how we do it ultimately comes down to trust. It's sort of like building trust over time. Um, and sometimes that trust happens really quickly just because you have, you have really shared values, right? And that's really awesome when that happens. You know, it's like you find a team where you're like, well, it feels like we've been working together for years. Um, and those are, the, those are, you know, the, to, to me, that's probably the, been the biggest indicator of success at Buck is there was a certain thing that I think shifted um, really in the, I guess, probably in the business landscape, you know, in the mid, mid 2000s, where a lot of power was shifting towards Silicon Valley um, and a lot of agency folks and creative folks were joining those teams. And I think we found that what shifted there is we were no longer kind of put in this box of production company or animation company or studio or whatever they called us. Um, we were more started started to be seen as like creative partners, and they'd be like, "Oh, you can, you can deliver that thing or make that thing amazing. What about 
this other thing, you know, and that was something that allowed us to expand our capabilities organically through relationships. Um, and that was like, you know, finding the teams that understand that you're creative problem solvers. And so they'll sort of, they, they want you to help create and solve more and more problems. And that's been a great thing for us, but it's also, uh, you know, it's helped fuel our growth, but it's also one of the things that as you build those relationships, it can become challenging where you're like, we're used to delivering our core competency of design and animation at this level. Now, what happens when they start asking us to deliver experience or like a physical installation or, um, you know, creative technology, which we've really pushed into or like AR or VR and we're being asked, to, that's really exciting for curious folks, but you also need to make sure that you're continuing to show up at that level, you know?